I fell in love with two different guys on the internet. Marky has spent her entire life savings in an internet romance scam. How much money in total have you sent him? Thousands? Oh my god. 20,000? More. 30? More. 100,000 dollars? Probably. Oh my god. It had been a while since I caught up with Cindy, who we had met as Marky in the previous episode. We had stayed in touch on Facebook, but when she reached out to me and wanted to do a follow-up episode, I had no idea what exactly the new circumstances were for her. Cindy! Hi! How are you? But when I walked up to her and saw her with the shopping cart, I was worried things had taken an even worse turn than I could have imagined. Good to see you! I got you coffee. Oh, how sweet of you! I don't know what kind of coffee you drink, I just got you regular coffee with half and half. And I also got you like some pastries. I don't know if you. Oh my god, really? That's so sweet of you. Of course. I don't know what. Again, I don't know what you eat, but I got you two different. I got you a bagel and cream cheese, and I like this like loaf thing. Of course. Well, your eyelashes look great. Thank you. I just got them yesterday. And your hair looks great. Oh well, I'm trying. It's longer than I remember. Probably grew. Yeah, it's been a few months. Yes. I'm gonna be interviewed right now. I'll call you in a while. I couldn't help but wonder who was on that phone. Was she still talking to the scammers? I'm so happy that we're doing this. Oh, me too, thank you. It's been, what, like six months since I've seen you? Yeah, it must be at least just... And I feel like so much has changed. The world has changed, yeah, so much. But for you especially. Yeah, I got evicted the first week of March um, because I didn't pay my rent for, Jun for January or February. When the unemployment stopped last September, my money just kept dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. So I was really overpaying, but it was a beautiful apartment. You saw it in my last video. Yeah. Um, After you got evicted from your apartment, uh, you you moved into your car. Right, right, yes. And you were just sleeping like on a street, like pulled over and well, parked? There's a park that I go to right down the street. It's the city of West Hollywood Park. They have free Wi-Fi, and at the time they had free electricity. So I would go there and be able to plug in and charge up and stuff, and I hadn't been paying my car payment either. I was out somewhere doing something, and my car got repossessed. So then I had nothing and nowhere. Um, I kept coming here. This is the um, Senior Services Gay and Lesbian Center in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I started coming here and slept here for a while. You would sleep here? Yeah. Like, on, like on the street. Just on the street? Yeah. Was it your first time ever sleeping on the street? Yes, yes. My whole life. Was it scary? Yes. Well, the first night I did it without the car was a whole different experience because you could feel the wind. You had no privacy. I probably slept off and on maybe an hour, hour and a half. It's real unease. I feel like since the last time I saw you, it's really taken even a worse turn. Yes, it has. I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Yeah. Do you ever wonder, and I don't mean this to insult you, but like, look, like, I would, did you ever imagine your life to turn out like this? No. Oh my God, no. Because you used to have a great job at Mattel, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that time of your life? Sure. I was a merchandiser, so I had like three or four people under me. We would travel from store to store, including Kmart, Walmart, Target, and Toys R Us, and spend two or three hours in each store merchandising ourselves and making sure things are priced correctly and building displays if called for. One of the stores was doing remodeling, and I tripped and fell over an unmarked children's names, maybe. I was upstairs, and the lady from her steering heard me fall, and she comes running up. She's like, oh, I'm sorry you fell, but I'm glad somebody did, because maybe they'll fix it now. So that little quote got me a lot of money, because that means they knew it was damaged, and they, didn't, they neglected to fix it. So you got hurt on the job, so you got to, like, you, they paid you out. Yeah, but they took the car, they took the job. So that's how you lost the job. Yeah. I couldn't walk, I couldn't, I mean, I was in a wheelchair at the time, I had a shattered knee. Did you get a lot of money? Yeah, I did. And that's where I started screwing up because I, I never had money in my whole life. What is next for you? Like, where are you? Are you in therapy? No. Are, you, are you talking to someone about these relationships that you have? And I currently no. I, I feel like maybe you should just to just to hear professional advice and to hear from someone who, you know, could give you guidance. I do have a therapist here on the LGBT center, and I haven't talked to him since I've been homeless because it's all stuff he already taught me, and it's all my own stupidity for continuing so it's my fault now you know that's how i feel i don't think it's your fault i think it's something inside of you that you can't control probably yeah because it sounds like you're aware of what's happening and then but you're still continuing it so yeah. i think it's something deeper that you can't that you need maybe another per, uh, guidance help yeah i, I agree i agree 100 percent. it's a fantasy fairy tale world that one of these guys is real and knight in shining armor is going to show up and take me away on the white horse i opened my own go find me and it has been successful. But is that money going to you, or are yeah. you giving that money? I only made $80, but it was mine. Yeah. But did you give it to them eventually? No, no, no. I kept that. I'm keeping my money now. You don't give them any more money? No, I won't give them any more money. None of them. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. You promise? Yeah. 
Uh, so are they still talking to you? Yes. But if you're not giving them money, what are they saying to you? Well, the main one now has sold his home in Texas and has money. And so he's all been like, um, I'm sick of you, I hate you, fuck you, excuse me. But then he keeps calling every day or texting every day. I miss you, I love you. So that's a real weird one. The second one, who I really love a little more because he's a little more stable, is actually having heart surgery on July 10th. And my current plan right now is to go there um, to be his caregiver while he's having his surgery and stuff and just staying there with him. We're at the LGBT Center. There's housing here, right? Yeah, and I'm on their list. Along with 18,000 other people in Los Angeles, I'm on their list. So it's really hard to get a place because th- no one's moving out. Yeah, unless you die. Where have you been sleeping right now? You just find a random spot in the street? Yeah, pretty much. Do you have a tent? No, no tent. So you just curl up somewhere and just... Yeah. Do you ever find yourself in danger? Yes. But I'm pretty good at staying out of danger. Are you ever able to afford a hotel or anything? Or? No, no. If I have the $100, I'm not going to use it for a hotel room. You need it for food? Yeah. And you just you live with that that uh, shopping cart, and that's all your belongings right now? Yeah, and when I go on the bus, I have to take everything out of the shopping cart and stack it on top of each other and lag it onto the bus. And then you just find a new shopping cart? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's very, very difficult. I'm not used to it. I'll be 60 in August. Next month, I'll be 60. And I've never lived like this. We were poor growing up, but never like this. I can't ask for help anymore because I've already asked for help from all these people to support the, the jackass who... Um, Scammed me. That's my problem, is that I want to help, and I'm trying to find a way to help, but I'm also... N- Wait, that it's not going to go to me. I understand that. Have you ever thought about just getting rid of your Facebook or any type of contact yeah. with them so that you can't get in contact with them anymore, even if you wanted to? And I've done it many times. Then how, does, how do you find him again? Uh, because I know, like, for a lot of us, if we break up with an ex, like, we erase their number so we can't text them, or we can't even... If we want to, we can't even do it. Yes. So maybe you should, I want you to do something like that. So even if you want to at night when you're lonely, you reach out to them. You, there's no way for you to. Yeah, I have tried that. So they get a new phone number and they fool me with a new phone number. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? This is so-and-so. Oh my God, how did you find me, so-and-so? I feel so much for you. And I know people that watch the episodes have been reaching out to me asking how you're doing. And your heart is so big. People are really rooting for you and they love you. And, you and. Guys. They, they want the best for you, and I do too. And you are such a creative, smart person. And you're still young. I think you can turn your life around. I hope so. I'm trying to. Yes. It's slow, but you like take baby steps. It's already been four months, believe it or not. But I can't be one of these people who have been homeless 10 years. I'm not going to be that. No, no you're not. Around. When you sit and you think, oh, wow, like what, the, what, what happened? What is your feeling? I think from being a 350-pound man to turning into a 140 pound woman. And then two months later having this pandemic hit, it was such a emotional distress for me and desperate time loneliness just took over me and I believed a scammer. For like two years I believed a scammer. And helped him out, helped him out, helped him out. And he gets to to America and decides he hates me. Or he never came to America. I thought of that too. I thought of that too. That he's still in the country playing this character. I thought of that too. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. I, and I, I don't. I hate saying that to you because I know that hurts your heart. Yeah, but you might be right. You know, when you had your apartment and everything was okay, yeah. like I was willing to feel hope for you and want that for you. But when yeah. your life is where it's at right now and you're on, you're on the streets, like I want you to realize the truth yeah i feel for you so much and i think about you all the time that's so sweet of you thank you i really consider you like someone a friend of mine and, and i want the best for you and i want and, and i hope you know that i'm all, i'm always here for you that's so sweet of you thank you sweetie. i mean it thank you, sweetie. thank you very much thank you very much you've made me feel better today thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna get some cash out for you right now and bring it to you oh, thanks, sweetie. because i want to help you out as in so any way i can i'm such a giver and i'm such not a taker but it's I have to readjust those things now because I have to accept things. You are too strong of a person. You'll figure it out. I need I you to figure it out. I will. I'll figure it out somehow. Yeah. Okay. And I think you all, strangers, I think you all, even though we're not strangers, if you already know me, you can see me and say, hi, Cindy, and I'll be just like an Eve forever. Hi, how are you? Thank you, guys. I love you all. Thank you. We love you. On my drive home, I couldn't help but rack my brain for ways that my audience and I could help her out. Ways that we could trust what we were giving would help her and not the scammers. I thought about starting an Amazon wish list for her that I could hand deliver her the items. But days later, she posted this on her Facebook story. 
I messaged her, wanting to make sure that she was at least safe. 